the Bonneville Salt Flats. Let's cool it down and see if we can go a little bit better next time. Known for its numerous land speed records, the salt is also famous for infecting those who come with something called salt fever. Salt fever can best be described as the notion to want to keep chasing your car's top speed. And on this episode of Inside EVs, we go to the flats in a Model 3 performance, and oh boy, are we infected with salt fever. Hello and welcome to Inside EVs. You join me in northwestern Utah at the Bonneville Salt Flats. And today we're taking a Tesla Model 3 performance and chasing its top speed. If you haven't yet subscribed to Inside EVs, if this is no indication that you should, you should absolutely subscribe to our channel right down here. Click the bell icon as well because you're gonna see some really cool things with electric vehicles. With that said, let's talk about the car and the location. The car, of course, is a 2019 Tesla Model 3 Performance. It's my personal car. I own it and I'm actually driving it on like a 15,000 mile road trip around the country. If you want to see more of those, link over here to a whole series on road tripping this car and camping out of it. But I actually removed the roof box, as you can see, because that is not great for top speed. And we have the Martian MW03 lightweight 18 inch wheels that fit over the performance upgrade brakes. And they should also help with reaching the top speed. So with that said, we are going to get in the car and rip it up and down the Bonneville salt flats. So we are at 85% state of charge. There seems to be kind of like a runway carved that we kind of found. We're towards the back end of the flats and uh, there's some people hanging out camping over that way. So we're gonna keep the car in normal mode. I'm gonna put the steering in sport, which is something I never do, but it's such a loose surface that just having a little bit less electric assist in the uh, steering rack may help. So uh, regenerative braking, I'm also gonna put on low. I wanna have full control over the brakes. Uh, if regen kicks on in the weird spot, I, I wanna be able to free roll if needed. So low regen, acceleration in sport, Let's see uh, how some speed feels. We're not chasing VMAX, but we're gonna see what feels comfortable. So let's go, full power down. We're flat to the floor. We have traction control kicking in hard. More traction control, 70 miles an hour. I'm gonna not go full throttle. I'm just gonna ease up, we're at 100 miles an hour. 110. 110 feels good, but I can feel the car starting to move. And there were some surface changes. 110, yeah, that feels good. Right around here, foot down, 120 miles an hour, 125 cruising, no problem. Let's pick it up. 130, can we hit it? 132, car's moving around a lot. I'm gonna back it down. Light brakes, light brakes. 119 miles an hour. So at 132 miles an hour, you really could feel the car start to start to get caught by some wind or it was moving around. So I'd say that felt pretty good, but definitely exhilarating, but 132 miles an hour on the salt flats. Now we're gonna see if we can make a little bit of a difference. What we're going to do is um, continue down this way and we're gonna put the car in track mode put the power all the way to the front. So that basically makes it understeer in situations rather than oversteer and that creates stability and we definitely want stability at speed. And um, then I'm gonna set the regen down and traction control to the fullest because again, with the car moving around so much, it's a little different. You know, I'm super comfortable going sideways on track, but on the salt at 130 miles an hour, uh, I don't really know. We'll have to see how that goes. So, Let's go up this way, flip it around, and run on the way back. I'm gonna put the car in park. We're at 81% state of charge now. We're gonna enable track mode, go into customize. We're gonna go stability full, front wheel drive full, and regen to, 
I don't know, 20%, let's just say. Let's see how this feels. Wide open power, here we go. You can wheels, see wheels are spinning. Accelerates very differently immediately. It's cutting power at 80. It doesn't want to give us full beans. Come on, car. I'm floored, but it's it's cutting power. It must be having the stability control full on that's freaking it out. We're gonna cruise over this. Yikes. Someone did donuts. Don't want to do donuts for that reason. 120 miles an hour. Car feels instantly more stable. 130. 137 miles an hour. And we are braking for these parks. Yikes! <laughs> that one caught me off guard. So we did 137 miles an hour that time. The battery actually got a little warm. I think I'm going to kick on compressor overclock just to spin it up. It's 95 degrees outside. And we're going to run it in this same setting. It felt really good backwards. Again, driving at speed on salt's a totally different game than driving at speed on pavement. And uh, I'm no expert, but I do, you know, you definitely start to feel the car move around on the salt crystals above 100 miles an hour or so. So 137 miles an hour to beat. Can we do it? Full of power. Let's go. You can feel that front axle working as hard as it can. We have a little bit of heat going into the rear motors. All right, traction control was holding us back, but now it's letting us go. I'm still flat to the floor, as hard as we can go here. So, let's see, that's 100 miles an hour. Feels pretty good to me. 115, we're gonna cruise over these undulations. Why does this seem less smooth than last run? And we're going back to wide open power. 22 miles an hour. Whoa, car moving around in this way. Direction. And in three, two, we're gonna go plus eight on stability. Let's go. Full beans. Much harder launch with the power set a little bit farther back. It's cutting power again, 80 miles an hour, just traction control. And now hopefully it's gonna open it up. 100.
driving on this surface is like nothing else. We just hit the maximum speed that that car would go on the salt flats and it was 158 miles per hour. Now the Model 3 performance on the website says it can do 162 and that's only when the conditions of the drivetrain are in optimum state of charge, optimum temperature, etc. However, I think on the first run when I had to slow for traffic at 156 miles per hour, we absolutely could have hit the top speed if I stayed in it. By the time we just did our last run and hit 158 before we hit a wall, basically the car said, hey, I don't want to go any faster, gave us the dots on the screen. Uh, you know, the battery state of charge was below 40% and it probably just couldn't give us the power to maintain 162 miles per hour. However, 158 isn't bad. We went as fast as the car would allow us to go. And uh, honestly, it felt pretty safe. Once you got up above 140, the car kind of locked itself right in. Uh, but you know, that, that section building up between 100 and 140, you have to get used to it moving around. Anyway, it's my first time, not on the flats, but my first time flying down the flats. I hope one day we can enter into a Bonneville Speed Week with an electric vehicle and maybe set a top speed for an EV officially in a safe environment. This is really cool. I encourage you all to come out to the Salt Flats if you're traveling through. There's a supercharger only about six miles away, so you can do a nice 100% charge and burn up your juice in about 10 minutes out here on the flats like we just did. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the Inside EVs YouTube channel, and we'll see you on the next cool EV episode.